Hi, this is Debbie Lewis with Learning and Organizational Development, and I wanted to show you how to use workflows to create email triggers for surveys. I'm going to show you two different ways. The first way, starting from scratch, and the second, uh, copying over your existing e email triggers if you have them in survey options uh, to create new ones in workflows. So this is a survey I have on the screen right now. Um, it's a brand new survey, it does not have the email trigger set up for it yet. It is a registration survey that is using three different types of payment. Uh, they can pay by credit card online, they can cr pay by credit card um, over the phone, or they can mail their check to uh, the county extension office. So the first thing I wanna do is set up three separate email triggers. Um, for these separate events. So I'm going to go up here to workflows in the upper left hand corner and click there. I'm going to go ahead and click on create workflow and you can uh, jump ahead a step by clicking on this drop down here and I want this to be started by an event. And my event is going to be that someone has responded to the survey. So survey response, I'm gonna click here. And I'm gonna say it's a newly created response. That's when this event needs to happen. Okay, the next thing I wanna do is set up a condition. So I'm gonna click on this little plus symbol below my survey response. I'm gonna set this up as a condition. I'm gonna click on any of the following are true. I'm gonna leave that as it is. I'm going to click on this select after I click on the condition plus button. I'm going to click on this select drop down that appears and it's going to be based on a question. I'm going to go find that question that says, how do you want to pay? And then I said that I'm going to set up my um, credit card by phone first, I think. So I'm gonna, or credit card online. So I'm gonna go ahead and set one up for this first option here, debit credit card online payment. And then you have to, this last box should be is selected. Then I'm gonna click on the done editing button. And then the last thing I need to do is set up my email. So this last thing is going to be a task. So I clicked on the plus button below my conditions and I'm gonna click on task. And then I'm gonna click on email because I want it to send an email to the respondent. The way I figure out how to send the email to the respondent is I use the pipe text field. Um, so this is a nice upgrade from using um, survey options and uh, post survey email triggers uh, because we can actually click and use the pipe text drop down. So you should have collected your, the email address of the respondent on your survey. So I'm going to click on this drop down here. I'm going to go to the survey question where that contact information was provided. And I'm going to click on email. And then that will put that in there. Now, if you want a copy of this to go to um, other people in the office, for example, the office support staff person who does the fiscal and the balancing for Nelnet, because this is an online uh, credit card payment, you can put their email address in this two line and they'll get a copy of this email trigger. Um, this particular survey is set up for Bruce Clevenger, so I'm going to put him as the from name just by typing his first part of his email address in this first box. And then I'm going to select at osu.edu from the second drop down. And I'm going to put his name in the from box. And his name over here on the end too. And then I'm going to put a subject line. And then I'm going to go ahead and put payment by credit card.
and I want this to be sent immediately. Um, so here I can start from scratch um, typing my message. So I want to have this message personalized. So I'm going to use pipe text to um, go to the survey question where they've provided their first name. And I'm going to say, hello, first name. I just clicked on that A with the curly brackets around it, which is the pipe text. And then I found the question and found the first name. And then I would go ahead and type in what I want the email to say. I happen to already have that uh, typed out. So thank you for registering for the OSU Extension Defiance County Sheep and Goat Internal Parasite Field Clinic. Remember your registration is not complete until the fee of $25 has been received. So be sure you complete it. Um, the credit card page it also tells them that they're going to receive a separate email from the quick pay website once they've completed their payment and then also tells them to mark their calendar. So if you want to bold and bring emphasis to anything, it's a WYSIWYG editor. What you see is what you get up here in the menu. You can just edit this. So highlight what you want to change. Um, let's say I want to make this bold and red. So I clicked on the B. I'm going to click on the A with the little underline. I'm going to click on more colors because I want this to be the OSU red. So I'm going to do hashtag B, B, and four zeros, two, three, four, and that will give us our scarlet red. So that way it brings attention. Um, also make sure that you have provided your um, branded signature block here. And since I copied and pasted this from a uh, Word document, it looks like it did not carry over my correct red color. So I'm just highlighting these and, and correcting that. Okay. Um, so then I can just click on, um, I'm going to go ahead and edit one more thing. I'm going to um, correct the fonts here for the body of the email because uh, it looks like there's a couple different fonts there. And we'll go ahead and make this like a 12 point font so it's a little bit bigger. Then I'm going to go ahead and click on, um, I'm going to change this subject line real quick so that it gets the full name of the clinic. All right, and I'm going to click on save. So now you can see here I have a new workflow. Um, for payment by credit card online. So I'm going to go ahead and change the name of this workflow from new workflow to um, credit card payment online. And then I'm going to hit my back button here. And then we'll see this listed as credit card payment online. Over here on the left hand side, I have a survey open in um, Firefox. And on the right hand side, I have the same survey open in um, Chrome. This survey had three different email triggers set up for it um, using the survey options. And again, um, these are no longer working in Qualtrics, so we're having to move them over. So if you have existing ones, just go to where they live in, in your survey. So I'm going to click on survey options and then post survey and then manage email triggers, edit triggers. And then you can see the three different ones that are here. I've already copied two of them over on the right hand side of my screen in Chrome. Um, so one thing that you can do um, here in uh, your workflows is to copy an existing workflow. Um, and this will make it easier to just like edit the conditions um, of your workflow uh, to make it so that it is the correct payment option in this example. Um, so over on the left hand side, I need to find the email trigger that was for payment by check. So it looks like it's this one right here. I'm going to go ahead and open that by clicking on the title of it. And then I'm just going to copy what's here in the body of this um, email. And then over here on my right hand side of my screen, I'm going to scroll over here to the right. 
I'm going to go ahead and copy this, um, either one of these, it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to click on this little dot, dot, dot on the right, and I'm going to select make a copy. And then I'm going to say yes, so I want to duplicate this. And then here at the top, you can see it's added it, um, pay, payment by credit card online uh, copy. So I'm going to click on that title. I'm going to change the name of this one. So it'll be payment by check. I'm going to change the condition for this one. So click on the edit conditions here. Going to increase the size of my screen a little bit. Edit conditions. And then um, how would you like to pay? That question is going to be the same, but I'm going to change the answer. So the response will be uh, check mail to the office. And then you have to change this last drop down to is selected again. And then I'm going to say done editing. And then it did copy my entire work. So I'm going to update this email by clicking on the email. I'm going to go ahead and click on this part of the email and do a control V on my keyboard because I had copied it from my other browser. Um, so you can see that's updated that. And I'm going to come up here to the top and change this to um, payment by check. And then you can see an example of this email is going to not only the person who's responding to the survey, um, but also it's going to um, support staff for fiscal um, in this particular office. And Deb Walters will be leaving us on Monday, the 31st of January. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete her. Uh, and I'm gonna click on uh, save because everything else should be correct. Another way you can um, add an email, the body of the email um, to your survey is by clicking on this load message. And if you have saved this in your library, you can load the message and I can show you where to do that. And I'm not going to include a response report, although you could do that if you had a very detailed survey, but this particular survey is telling them when they're supposed to attend um, this, uh, the, the session that they've signed up for by using the pipe text feature. I'm gonna go ahead and click on save. And then I'm gonna go back to click on my back button here. As you can see, the one that's copied I just made is turned off over here on the right. So I'm going to make sure that I turn it on. And since this is an active survey, I'm going to go ahead and go back to my survey by clicking on the word survey. And you'll see here that it's a draft now. Um, so your updates will not get made until you click on the publish publish button. So I'm going to go ahead and first I'm going to delete those email triggers out of survey options just in case they are still working. So again, that's under survey option, post survey, and then edit triggers. I'm going to go ahead and delete all three of these. and then save triggers. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click on that publish button so that the changes that we just made to the workflow are um, put into the survey. The last thing I wanted to show you is where you would um, save those uh, email triggers in Qualtrics. Um, so first I'm gonna go back to workflows for this particular survey. And um, I'm going to click on this credit card online. And I'm gonna open the email. 
I'm going to close that because I guess I want the other one. Let's see. Credit card over the phone. Um, the only reason they have a credit card over the phone option is because they have a credit card machine in their office still. Um, so they can do the credit card over the phone. So you can see here, um, instead of load message, um, this one has a, a message that was selected from my library. So this typically says message and it'll say load message. So you can click on that drop down next to load message, go to your library, and then it will show you the email messages that you have saved in the general messages folder in Qualtrics in your library. So this one would be um, the credit card over the phone. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and click on save. So if you wanna create your email messages like outside of your surveys, you can go to uh, your library, click on the messages library tab, and then click on this drop down and look for general messages. And that's where your workflows email messages will be stored in Qualtrics. Thank you, I hope that helps.